he went into election as a favourite and he was leading throughout the counting process, but no one would have expected such an overwhelming result. And I guess the secret to his victory is the um, his own party's electoral success. The Pangu party won 36 seats. That's about a third of the total in the PNG parliament. It's the most any single party's won in the last 40 years. And uh, although it's not a majority in its own right, you know, it was a significant enough number that uh, all the other smaller parties that wanted to be in government naturally flocked to the Pangu party. And, and in the end, they were able to get this, uh, you know, overwhelming uh, majority. Yeah. Not all MPs have been declared yet. Should Parliament have waited until all the numbers were in? No, they had already delayed the sitting of Parliament once. And I think at this stage, everyone was ready uh, for Parliament to meet. A lot of people complaining the counting process was taking too long, but I didn't hear anyone suggest that uh, they should postpone the sitting of Parliament again. Nearly all the MPs have now been declared. There's only a handful, less than 10, uh, where the counting's still going on. And I think the decision was so clear that, um, you know, people just wanted to get on with it. Yeah. Nevertheless, this is a coalition of 17 parties. How complicated is that going to be? Yeah, that's a good uh, question. Uh, I think in the short run, it'll be fairly straightforward because uh, Marape has such a big majority. Uh, we yet to see how many will actually end up in the opposition. But he has such an overwhelming majority, he can lose one or two parties and, and it won't really make any difference. Uh, things will get more difficult uh, later on, the first one and a half years in PNG, in the PNG parliamentary cycle is called the grace period. Uh, votes of no confidence are not allowed. After that, you are allowed to um, bring about a vote of no confidence and, and other leaders do that to try to displace the prime minister. So he'll face uh, a, a more difficult time there. Uh, even so, you know, he's won such a big majority. It is his first election uh, that he's competed in as uh, Prime Minister or for the Prime Ministerial position. You'd think he'd last the full term, but uh, we'll, we'll have to wait and see. Yeah. But as you point out, the most significant re-election in 40 years, I mean, is there going to be a, 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 an opposition of any note? Uh, we do often see in PNG Parliament a very uh, asymmetric situation where with a very large uh, government uh, a very a very large government majority and a very small opposition. And you'd think that that's what we'll see, um, you know, based on today's results. Yeah, we, we will only see a small opposition, but that doesn't necessarily mean the prime minister is safe because traditionally these challenges uh, will come from within the winning coalition. Someone else in that coalition will, will put their hand up for the top job. You know, it is interesting when you consider the incredible challenges PNG faces, even the difficulty of the election, which was probably the worst in, in, in history. Why has he kept such popularity? Uh, yeah, that's a good question. I mean, there are two things. I mean, the electoral quality uh, has been low in PNG uh, for some time. So I don't know we can say, you know, sadly, I, I'm not sure we can conclude yet that these are these are the worst, but yeah, clearly the electoral quality was unsatisfactory. In terms of why uh, Marape has done so well, I mean, I, I think at the at the national level, uh, his uh, personality, his, his rhetoric about taking back PNG uh, does resonate. Uh, but elections in PNG are very much local matters. And uh, what I would say, he's done a good job at attracting strong local leaders uh, to his side, either sitting, he had a lot of his sitting MPs got re-elected and then he clearly backed or, or selected a, a good number of candidates who went on, on to win. So in a sense, you know, within his own party, he put together a winning coalition of, of local leaders uh, around the country, strong local leaders around the country. Which may be really significant going forward. Um, you know, we also saw two women who were voted in and some other interesting, uh, you know, people elected. So do you think this changes the dynamic a little? Um, I think on the, on the situation with the women, it's great to see uh, two women in parliament. Clearly better uh, from the last parliament where no women uh, we're in that parliament. Uh, at the same time, I do worry a bit people will draw the wrong conclusion from that. And, you know, I, we've already seen the prime minister make some uh, what I think are unfortunate remarks that, you know, the fact that women have been elected shows that women can win on their merits and therefore we don't need uh, special measures or affirmative action for women. Whereas, you know, what I'd say is, yes, there were no women in the last parliament, but if you look back at earlier parliaments, there have often been one, two or even three women. Uh, in Parliament. So I hope when people look at the results this time round, 
you know, they won't say, oh, that's great, two women have been elected, therefore we don't need to do anything. Uh, rather, they'll say, you know, gee, only, uh, once again, only a very small number of women have been elected, therefore we really need to put in place some, uh, you know, temporary special measures, affirmative action measures to really get a significant number of women into the PNG Parliament next time around. Yeah, and to, to particularly deal with some of the entrenched issues that women face in Papua New Guinea. Um, you know, important too are the serious economic challenges that PNG um, faces. What do you think is going to be um, the agenda of this new parliament? Yeah, I think that's the, the economic issues uh, will be uh, at the top of the list. I think, I think immediately uh, there is a lot of dissatisfaction with the electoral process. Uh, you know, there was violence, uh, there was interference. Uh, it just seemed very disorganised. Uh, the electoral roll was completely out of date. So I think the, the reforming the electoral process uh, will be an early priority. But then uh, the economic issues uh, will also loom large. Uh, and PNG was already facing an economic slowdown before COVID. Uh, COVID's made things worse. It's coming out of COVID, uh, a bit like Australia, with a high deficit, quite a lot of debt. Uh, but it's also facing a situation of uh, really quite severe foreign exchange shortages. Uh, so there are some very uh, pressing issues uh, facing the government uh, on the economic front. Uh, they, they've said they're going to bring down a, a supplementary budget uh, as early as next month. Uh, so, and, and presumably the, the treasurer in the outgoing government uh, will, be the, will be the same treasurer, so they'll be able to hit the road uh, running. Uh, but they, they do really uh, need to act very quickly on the economic front and try and uh, stimulate uh, the economy, uh, perhaps through, uh, you know, what has been in the too hard basket, which is tackling that problem of uh, an overvalued currency and uh, foreign exchange shortages and rationing. Stephen, we will watch with interest. Uh, appreciate your analysis. Thanks so much. All right. Thank you.